prisoners are immune from prosecution, even in the face of crass criminality. You get to a situation where when the governors deliberately underperform, they drag the entire country down. And that's why you see, you know, such level of lackadaisical performance, you know, from state to state. You know, the number of states that are viable and really performing at just a small fraction compared to the entire number. And if you had all the states working in tandem, energized, performing, you know, have, you know with a peer-reviewed uh, process where they look across each other's shoulders and say, you know, what are the best practices, uh, you know, uh, happening that we can copy and, and, and use to improve the lives of our people. You discover that you know this country will run a lot faster because let's also uh, put everything in context. When we talk of the national budget, we're just discussing the federal government revenue. Don't forget that the total collectible revenue is almost double of uh, the total size of the federal uh, budget. So you're looking at a situation where for 2018 there is a total uh, collectible federal revenue of 11.6 billion uh, trillion uh, naira out of which the federal government is budgeting 8.6. What that means is that the difference is what gets shared with the states you know, and the local government. If they don't, re if they don't uh, uh, you know, uh, spend that amount uh, wisely, and if the governors just choose to do as they please, owe salaries for as many months as they please, you know, and generally stagnate their states, the country Mr. can never be seen to be performing well. So when you see the country going Mr. to recession, I guess much we... of that recession is caused by the laziness I, I'm, sorry. And the lack of I'm sorry, I'm sorry, with due respect uh, for cutting you there. We need to take this break. We'll be right back for the final part of this panel discussion. Thank you, everyone. Stick around. It's increasing, and the capital expenditure is um, um, dwindling as well. So it is um, extremely important that we look, look for a way to um, increase our revenue base and channel that into the capital expenditure because we can no longer re uh, re uh, rely on them. Um, borrowings and um, foreign borrowings and with our local foreign debt to fund um, the capital expenditure alone, given the fact that we are even having um, several um, um, grading in terms of the Moody rating for credit for Nigeria is going that we are now on the B minus, if I'm right. And it's extremely important that the government look for ways of course, increase our revenue base, most especially from the tax aspects, because Nigeria economy now has moved away from Hawaii. So, about 95% from the non-Hawaii um, in terms of the GDP. So, the government can plug into that rather than focusing more on Hawaii. As long as we continue focusing more on Hawaii for government revenue, we won't be able to meet up with uh, the um, capital expenditure and the recurrent um, expenditure. I have to go along with the size of the civil servants. If you look at the size of the civil servants, um, because presently, uh, if I'm right, Nigeria, uh, the government still employ, still have more in terms of uh, employment generation for, um, I mean, the, empl the em employment, if you compare the, the employment rates in the private sector and also in the government, in government sector, you find out that that is one of the factors that is dragging, I mean, that, I mean, that, that is increasing. Um, the recurrent ex expenditure. So it's not a good way to go, but um, the government can look into that and also look at way to um, channel more fund into the capital um, expenditure because that is where, um, uh, that, that is the area that affect lives of Nigerians, the life of Nigerians. I mean, the capital expenditure, you talk about the roads, the hospital, and what have you. So all of this needs to be improved on. Thank oh, you. Let's uh, 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 bring uh, Mr. Ami sitting next to you there into, into this conversation very quickly. Uh, if you are in charge of a particular, if you're in charge of this economy, for example, and you're putting the budget together, uh, Mr. Ami, how would you deal with the current size of our expenditure and the civil service uh, in, in terms of what they deliver, what they consume and deliver into the budget and the economic purse? Yeah, first of all, what I would do is to task every ministry, every department, every agency of government to become income generating. As it is right now, many of the ministries don't add anything to the bottom line, and that's not right enough. So anybody who is the minister or the executive secretary responsible for any government agency should be given a task, first of all, to say, 
you must generate something into the till. Otherwise, there's no budget for you to spend. If, you know, you know, rather than just wait there and expect somebody to put money, you know, into execution of, uh, of uh, projects, you know, you need to be able to be part of the generation of the income. It's becoming extremely tempting for this government, you know, to look in the direction of taxation. You know, the new uh, catchphrases, you know, let's earn more from taxes. You know, but what, that, what people are losing sight of is that taxation flows from the social contract. The government has a duty to deliver certain goods and services in exchange for the citizens contributing part of their legitimately earned income and putting it in the hands of government to deliver those services. Where there is a disjoint between the services the government renders and the, uh, the, and, and the funds that people put in the hands of government, then of course you will see a lot of resistance in taxation. So when people say that Nigeria's uh, you know, tax to GDP ratio is very low compared to other countries, what we need to be looking at is what are the level of services that those countries provide to their citizens you know, uh, relative to what the government of Nigeria offers. Quite frankly, the average Nigerian is on his own. We have our own local government, we provide our roads, we provide our water through boreholes, we provide schools you know, for our children through uh, the, the private uh, secondary uh, primary and secondary schools you know, and universities that are so expensive to run. The, the government has virtually given up. You go to, to the public schools, they're just a joke. So you know, you'll be asking yourself, what does the government really do for you? And why should you pay tax? We will hear a lot now about VATES and, you know, how government is going to get so much more money from, you know, voluntary assets and income, income and uh, voluntary assets income declaration scheme. But seriously, can this government legitimately demand more from its citizens that are overburdened, that are suffering, that are struggling on a daily basis to pay the school fees of their children from eking out a living virtually as if the, 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 the government doesn't exist? In other countries where government, you know, sends people to prison for evading taxes, government can also point out to what they do for the citizenry. What does government do for Nigerians, quite frankly, to be able to, 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 to demand taxes? And to answer your question directly about the, 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 the joint between capital expenditure and, and recurrent expenditure, so much money is spent on civil servants, you know, on, uh, on the politicians, you know, the, uh, who, you know, you know people, most people will argue that, you know, the value that is added, you know, to, to, to the average, to the day-to-day -day lives of Nigerians through the political process and through the civil service process is very minimal. If you go to most government ministries, you know, most of the workers, you know, hardly ever show up at work or the doing what they do, you know, they don't, you don't see the value that they, that they, that they, that they add, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, to, to the running of the services that they are meant to be, to be rendering. But at the end of the day, all of the government budgeting goes, a huge chunk of government budgeting goes into, you know, meeting their, their salary needs and so on. We need to be able to change all of that because the only benefit the citizens get from the budget is when government spends on capital expenditure. And when, you know, as you rightly analyzed, you know, uh, capital expenditure is, 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 is obtained from borrowing, meaning that, you know, government doesn't really take, take capital expenditure seriously. How can capital expenditure be 30% of the budget, you know, and, then, and, we, and, we, and we claim to be doing something? You know, we really just must, you know, as a matter of policy, make a policy and say from next year, 70% of the government budget is going to go on capital expenditure and let the rest go to recurrent expenditure. That way, government will be forced to dance out. The National Assembly will be forced to reduce their salaries and allowances, which most Nigerians think is completely unfair relative to their, their productivity. And then we will begin to see this country grow. The way it is right now, quite frankly, the citizens are slaving for the politicians and for, 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 for the civil service. And I don't think it's right. We appreciate that, those contributions. Uh, we need to take a break, but I'm going to take just one minute a reaction to the latter part of your conversation, Mr. Ami, from uh, Wale uh, Abayami, who is here uh, from KPMG, who is also a member of the uh, Chivney Alumni. You have one minute. Okay, right. Um, I believe that we need public service reform. We don't need as many people that we have uh, currently in the public service. Uh, in the private sector, and government can learn from that, is that we do a head count, manpower plan. What, how many people do you need relative to the work that you actually have uh, to, to be done, and we don't do that in Nigeria. Again, technology, we need to begin to use technology um, in order to be able to drive performance in the, in the public sector, which are, are, uh, currently is practically nil in, in, the, in the country. So combination of technology, and then again, uh, uh, Mr. President said that they're not going to recruit this year. I, I don't think that solves the problem. 
The problem is that we have to deal with the dead woods in the system and get them out and then rejuvenate the system with new hires who can deliver the good. We'll be back after the break. Let's take about one minute and then we'll have that conversation continuing with the rest of the panel.